AppGyver is a fantastic no-code tool to build web and mobile apps. But what do you do for the back end, for your database, your content management system, and where do you store all that information? One possible solution is Airtable, and I'm going to dive deep into the pros of Airtable and some of the limitations that Airtable has when combined with AppGyver. And then I'll give you my recommendation at the end on what I've seen and experienced and which applications would be best to use the combo of AppGyver and Airtable. The first pro is that it's quick to set up. It's really simple to implement the API into AppGyver. There is great documentation if you go to the AppGyver documentation, and there's also plenty of tutorials on YouTube that you can follow that'll show you exactly how to set up Airtable with AppGyver. And this is easily one of the biggest limitations when it comes to integrating two different tools in the no-code, low-code space. So if you are not technical, Airtable is a great, great solution for your backend just simply because of that. The second pro for Airtable is that it is great as a content management system. What I mean by that is similar to how WordPress works for websites, you can easily update the content of your app, whether it's text, images, uh, whatever you want to push dynamically. And that's one of the great things about Airtable is that once the API is hooked up, you don't have to push a new update to your app to the app stores that your users have to re-download and re-update. Instead, you can just change things dynamically within Airtable and it will be reflected into your app. And Airtable is super easy to work with because it looks like a Google Sheet or an Excel spreadsheet. And that makes it super simple versus some of the other databases that are out there. And that's a pro for Airtable. The third benefit to using Airtable, which relates to the content management piece, is that it's very flexible and you can customize it in any way that you'd like. So you can have multiple tables set up that store different types of information, or you can correlate all that. You can also easily change the views and you can have a Kanban board similar to like what Trello looks like. You can have just a regular Google spreadsheet. You can create an intake form. So you can do all of these different things with Airtable, which makes it super powerful as a backend in your AppGyver app because you can have information stored in different views in different ways that's easy for you to work with, as well as easy for AppGyver to interact with. The fourth pro for using Airtable is that there's automations built in to Airtable. What I mean by that is that when a new record is created, so a user inputs new information and you store it in your database, you can create automations based off of that. So anytime a new record is submitted, you could send an email to that user confirming that, that that record was created. So for example, I had a real estate contract app that I built and that's exactly what happened. I would automate an email being sent out to the user saying, hey, here's the information that was submitted. We're now gonna go create your contract. And you can control the triggers. It can be based on certain selections in the app. So you can get really creative and really um, particular in terms of what automations you use. And that's a benefit to Airtable. You can control the triggers, sharing to social media. There's all types of automations that you can do. And so as a no-code builder, it's great because you do not have to know how to code in order to create these complex automations. The fifth pro for Airtable combined with AppGyver is actually the fact that there might be some more complex automations that Airtable can't handle, but it integrates with Zapier. And Zapier is another automation tool that allows you to connect other apps and create triggers. So if there's an automation that Airtable can't handle, you can use Zapier. So that was one of the um, examples that I used earlier was around the contract creation. We actually wanted to create a PDF versus just sending that information in freeform text. And so what we did was we actually had to zap through Zapier that as soon as a record was created in Airtable, that information went to something called PDF Monkey, which created the PDF, and then it was sent back. And then we used the Airtable automations to automate the email flow that went out and sent that PDF contract to the user that had just submitted it. So that's the other powerful tool is that it ties into Zapier and that's already set up and you can do so many things because there's thousands of apps that are already integrated there. The sixth, but maybe one of the best benefits to Airtable is that it's free. They have paid upgrades. So if you hit certain amounts of records or things like that, you will hit a paywall. But in terms of just starting out, you can do all of these complex things without having to pay. And obviously AppGyver is a free tool. So if you're trying to build on a budget, it's hard to be free. That being said, there are limitations. So you have to look because they're constantly changing. But 
for the most part, the core functionality that you need to get value out of Airtable and AppGyver, you can get for free using both tools. So now I'm gonna get into the limitations of Airtable combined with AppGyver. The first one is around authentication. And what I mean by authentication is if you want your users to create an account, log back in, you can do that through Airtable, but there's not an easy way that automatically does this for you. You'd have to kind of set this up on your own. It's definitely doable, but I wouldn't recommend it and it's not built in automatically. What I've used is a combination of Firebase and I've got a video coming out that will be talking about the pros and cons of using Firebase and AppGyver but I've actually used a combination of the two. But that is one of the limitations with Airtable is there's not an automatic authentication profile login creation that you can do. There's ways to do it manually, but it's not built in. The second con, and this is a big one if you're storing very sensitive data, is um, security. And what I mean by security is that it's not that Airtable itself is insecure, it's the way that AppGyver combining with Airtable works your API keys, which are the things that you have to Im implement so that the, the two communicate together, through AppGyver will be public. So if you're storing sensitive information, someone could reverse engineer your code, find that API key and hack your data. So it's really important that you don't store super critical information. And if you're just testing out and building things, then Airtable works great. Or if you're just using it more as like that content management system and not storing personal information about your users or what they're doing, then Airtable is still a good solution. But there are security issues. And this is going to be the same for any, any API that you set up within AppGyver. They publicly display that key currently. So what that means is there's ways to continue to, to create security like having an extra layer, having authentication rules. But as I touched on in the first bullet is that Airtable doesn't have that authentication built in. So that's one thing to be aware of is there's some security concerns when you blend Airtable with AppGyver. The third con ties on that last pro, which is that while it's free, there are certain limitations and you will hit a paywall at some point. Now it's better than a lot of the other apps that I've seen out there in terms of where that paywall hits. So you can actually get a lot of value from Airtable in the free version. And then when you need to pay for it, you'll get a lot of room. It's not like a expensive jump to get what you need if you are seeing a lot of success with your app and needing to use a lot of these extra premium features or just have the ability to do quicker API calls, more API calls and storing more data in a single database. So that's the thing to think about um, as a con though, is that you will at some point hit a paywall. The fourth con, is scalability issues. And Airtable allows you to do a lot of things well, and it'll scale for the most part, but once you get a huge load, if you, you know, your application takes off or you just have a ton of users using it at once, there's a chance that it'll break. And this partly goes to making sure that you're in the right paid plan, but also just there's some concerns that I've got scalability wise. For the most part, this isn't gonna matter unless you're just, absolutely crushing it and taking off, in which case, good problem to have. And so while it's a con to think about, it's not one that I would weigh too heavily when deciding whether to use Airtable and AppGyver. Those were the six things that I really like about Airtable and AppGyver and the four things that, eh. So now I'm gonna get into my recommendation. So my recommendation for you is if you are truly a no code builder, you do not know how to write any code, you're not technical at all, Airtable is a really good solution and you're not storing sensitive data. So those are the two things that I would think about is if you truly don't know how to code and you are not storing sensitive information, Airtable is a great solution for you. It allows you to do a lot of complex things with other applications. And again, you don't have to write any code, which is the beauty of these tools and they're free. Now, if you start to have a lot of success and you've started building with Airtable and AppGyver, you can always move away um, from Airtable and bring on an actual experienced uh, developer. At that point, you have enough traction, hopefully you have revenue, or you at least have a path to revenue that you can bring on someone that actually does know how to code and you could then move off of, off of Airtable and AppGyver combined and move to something like Firebase, which is another great solution, but requires a little bit more technical knowledge. Now, with that caveat, I do recommend using Firebase as your authentication tool. What I mean by that is if you were going to have account creation, logins, signups, all that stuff, Firebase is the tool to do that with. 
And again, there's documentation in AppGyver of how to connect those two things. And there's plenty of videos that show you how to use uh, Firebase and integrate it with AppGyver for authentication. So that's what I've done is I've used a combination of Firebase for authentication for an app and then Airtable as the back end. And it's been really helpful, especially early on in using again, those automations that already exist in Airtable. Hope you found this valuable. Um, if you did, please leave a like, comment below. I'd love to know what application you're building. And I'm happy to help if you've got questions or concerns, you're getting stuck. I'm happy to answer what I can and point you in the right direction to get those answers if I'm not able to. I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. I'm William Glass, host of the Silicon Alley podcast and a fellow no-code, low-code builder. The company that I founded is called Ostrich. We've built a mobile app that helps people achieve their financial goals through social financial challenges. And I'd love it if you go to the app stores, download it, play around with it, and uh, give me your feedback. I believe it will definitely help you no matter what your financial goals are. But if you happen to struggle with personal finance, then we're definitely a great solution that is free. So thank you so much for your time and I hope you have a wonderful day. Are you interested in growing and scaling your business? Welcome to the Silicon Alley podcast, where you'll hear from entrepreneurs, venture capitalists, and top performers on what it truly takes to grow and scale a business. You'll walk away with actionable insights you can apply in your own business and life.